What is up, everyone? Welcome back to French Bread's Dark Souls 3 lore run. I am French Bread, or Chris if you prefer. And as promised, we are back in the Crucifixion Woods. We're gonna get straight back to the action this time instead of uh, spending an entire episode more or less in Firelink talking. Alright, so for starters, I'm going to clear out this initial area that we were at before and we're gonna go examine that summon sign that intrigued me so <laughs> I, I did a little bit of looking up and it does not appear that it's going to mess with anything if we use it except for maybe us Alright. Let's bring Hodrick in. Now we can lock on to him because he's a mad phantom, but I'm sure that... Oh. Alright, fair enough. He can dodge fireballs. Oh, Hodrick. Oh! A little bit of pyromancy himself. Right, I remember. He can... Oh. It's like a passive... Oh, shit. <laughs> I was... <laughs> so bedazzled by his little flame there, I didn't realize I was R1 spamming into him when he's using his weapon one-handed. Uh, which... I think I mentioned first time we fought him. Uh, if he's wielding his weapon one-handed, he can, and as you saw, will parry you, and it will wreck you pretty good. We don't have enough HP to survive even one of those. So we're going to try this again, but hopefully be a little more careful. Actually, I don't know why I'm playing fair here. He wants to kill us. Nope, it's a little slow for that, Hodrick. Yep, gonna punish that. As you can see, um, <laughs> when you're in the middle of a jumping attack and you leap at an enemy, you take quite a bit of extra damage. Oh, wow, those missed backstabs are extra punishing when you have this particular weapon. Oh, that's interesting. Fuck! <sighs> so, I wasn't aware that when, um... I don't know if players do this, or if it's just Hodrick here, but I wasn't aware of a, uh that constant tracking effect that he would rotate his body while drinking the Estus in order to avoid getting backstabbed. Which kinda, not to be salty or anything, but that kinda seems like a lot of bullshit to me. <laughs> you can't really punish, uh, you can't really punish the Estus use as efficiently if you can't get a backstab in on him. So I think that's not especially fair, but... So it goes. We're gonna keep at it for the moment, though, because now I'm a little irritated at him.
Also, you can tell that Perry of his is very much... He borped the computer read that I was making an attack. It's not like, um... Online, where parries are, you know, against other players. Where the parry is like a predictive thing that takes... You know, timing. And a little bit of luck to get down. He's clearly just reading our inputs and having a good old time about it. Ooh! Figured I could get one in while he was healing, but you saw him try to instantly parry us. Yeah, this healing works for me too, buddy. What is he up to? I gotta admit, this is more difficulty than I was hoping to have when dealing with an NPC, but like I kind of mentioned with um, our Butcher, Mildred Butcher look-alike, the NPCs have gotten a lot smarter in this game. Can't really abuse our attacks unless he's in the one-handed stance or the two-handed stance. Now we've got him. Now you're fucked, son. You done, son. Heesh. Not even a. Uh, not even a vertebra shackle for our troubles there. What a. <laughs> what a waste of time and face. Oh well, so it goes. We will <laughs> just pick ourselves up again and move on. So. That little experience taken care of. I would definitely want to start exploring this structure here. And the surrounding area. I know there's an entrance right through that hole in the wall there, but before we get to that we want to circle to the back. Bully the enemies we can bully. Because we're just a little bit salty still. Estes Shard. Always nice. Not sure I have how I feel about the one-handed move set there. I think I prefer it. Um, did I say one-handed? God, I'm sorry. I got thrown all out of swords by Hodric. <laughs> Put in the stomp on my ass. Um, I mean, I wasn't sure about the two-handed move set. The one-handed seems a little bit more agreeable. I don't use hammer class weapons, which I believe the war pick is under too often. Shush, shush, shush. We'll take that hit to keep you quiet. Uh, that would have been a nice spot for an illusory wall. We'll just make do, I guess. By locking on to the wrong enemy. It's gonna be one of those sessions, isn't it? Heretic staff. Before I deal with that, though, you can tell where well, you can't anymore because he's in the ground. Let's go upstairs. Oh no, there's only one. I am being thwarted at every angle. 
Now this guy you could have told uh, has a rather distinctive large wide-brimmed hat. This is actually almost almost identical to the hat worn by well, Big Hat Logan in Dark Souls 1, that uh, famous, powerful sorcerer I've discussed before. Uh, if what we read in the descriptions is true about uh, crystal sages, or at least one crystal sage being allied with the Undead Legion, then it is... it's reasonable to think that maybe these, uh, I guess, Farron sorcerers here are following the footsteps of Big Hat as the Crystal Sages might have. I don't think we have an item here. No. So we're gonna loop around before we go deeper into the main keep. Partly because we want this crystal lizard, but where the ambush should this guy right here notice you? Of course, he's not the only component of the ambush in this area. We also have... Well, maybe it's not fair to call it an ambush, but we have another caster and this irritating spear guy who is going to be determined to get in our way approaching the caster properly. Uh, these big hat sorcerers are actually surprisingly sturdy. They have more HP than any of the lesser goons do. Drop down from the ledge so we can grab this treasure. Yet another ring of sacrifice. Haven't had to bust one yet, but I do appreciate having a small stock of them on hand. Warriors slumber ahead. I believe that's... Hmm. That's either referring to that room back there, way over here, in the direction I'm moving, uh, where there were the sleeping hollow enemies, or... it's a reference to the fat knight enemies we're going to be encountering. I guess it would be more likely that it's that room, but the positioning is really weird on that. Sorry for the somewhat less stellar play. I'm getting used to kind of the move set and attack speed of this weapon, as opposed to the broadsword I was using before, which was much, much quicker. I guess understandably, given where all the weight's centered, this weapon has a very kind of heavy end to its swing. Heavy follow through, I guess you'd say. Alright. That taken care of. If we head up here, suspicious gate. And that looks all the world. For all the world like a boss room to me. So we're gonna backpedal and explore a little bit more thoroughly. This path right here just leads back to the location we were at before. And yes, there is a sign on the ground here. We're gonna engage that once we decide to fight the boss. Before we do so, we're gonna wrap around and head on up these stairs to meet our next NPC. Seems to have a nice setup for himself. Mm. No bed, though. I suppose if he's an undead, he doesn't really need a bed, does he? Let's see if we can get a good look at him. I don't know if it's just, you know, the gloves he has on that have the sort of a snakeskin look, but there's something somewhat, I don't know, serpentine about this guy. Well, this is unexpected. I don't often have visitors. What do you want? 
This is my study that you've happened upon. If you haven't any business, I've reading to get back to. How intriguing. Very well. Indeed, I am a sorcerer, with plenty to share. However, what champion demands service without recompense? Clearly, you are not that sort of woman. So you will make me a promise that in exchange for my teaching, you will bring me knowledge in the form of scrolls detailing sorcery's secrets. Well, can you assure me of this? Very well. You're no fool. I take it you understand the weight of a promise. I am Orbeck, a Vinheim, unkindled one. I shall teach you sorceries. We will learn together. It shall be like our very own school. And there we have it. Orbeck of Vinheim. Now, part of our cause. <laughs> I never actually noticed this before, but it looks like he's constructed a crude chair for himself out of the... Uh, I guess you'd call them crosses used for the crucifixion. That's actually really cool. That's a good use of a bad thing. Now all over this desk. We've got books and scrolls scattered around. Sorry, indulge. Indulge me for a moment. Yeah. Fortunately, these are all fairly low-quality book textures. I was kind of hoping um, to run into a <laughs> a book like you can find in Bloodborne, How to Pick Up Fair Maidens. A little bit of uh, comedic value, but no luck, I'm afraid. Head down here and grab the blue bug pellet. I don't think we'll look at it just yet, though, because it's just a friggin' bug pellet. That actually... that's pretty much it for this side keep area. But... There is one thing I want to do... One thing I want to subject myself to, more like, before I head into that obvious boss room. Let's head out this side path and collect the item waiting for us. Since you can't get to it except from this direction, I figure I may as well grab it now. Golden Falcon what shield? No, just a Golden Falcon shield. Fair enough. We'll take a look at that. And we look at the other items later. But I'm kind of feeling like I want to deal with that dude over there before we move on. So I'm going to try my hand at it. I did not do so well <laughs> with Hodrick, but I think we'll have an easier time. You know, maybe with this guy. Don't worry, I'm only using this crossbow to miss him entirely. Lure him out. And then we'll engage in fair battle. See, he has a target shield, so he is just dying to parry us. That was a little risky, I'll admit. If you're gonna let me do that, I'm gonna happily do this. That does it for him. Get a great club for our troubles. And it looks like we just got an Estus Flask back. No complaints here. Head up this path and the next one comes. And his weapon is quite a bit more intimidating. Is he also? Yeah, he has a Kestus. Or Kestus. Whatever you want to call it. 
Um, I promise you, just like an online player, the main reason he has that is so that he can try to parry us like fools. Oof, that tracking. And trying to break our guard too. They, I, I am really impressed with uh, with the enemy AI for these sorts of enemies. Thank you, stability. I think I can only really hope to stunlock him twice. Before he has a chance to roll out and do something else. Luckily these guys do not spam Estus also. I am properly not interested in trying to R1 spam into him when he's one-handing though. I don't want any of those dark Hodrick days returning. And that'll do it. I'll take that trade. And as expected, we get the Exile Greatsword as our reward there. And if you remember, now we're looping back to where we've already been in the swamp. We've got a ladder leading down and a pretty awesome overlook of something very not awesome waiting for us. It is exactly what it looks like. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think we'll leave that for later. Um, but let's do our item roundup now because the next thing we're going to do is take on a boss. So let's see. Got a new gem, the crystal gem. A gem of infused titanite. Introduced to Lothric by the Crystal Sages. Used in infusion to create crystal weapons. Crystal weapons inflict magic damage and scale effectively with intelligence. So, it's a gem to... Uh, it sounds like it gives your weapon magic damage and also gives it intelligence scaling as opposed to like the fire gem, which removes all scaling effects and gives you like a flat amount of fire damage so more appealing to intelligence based characters alright exile greatsword bloodstained greatsword wielded by one of the watchdogs of Farron who preside over slumber preside over the slumber of fallen warriors the blade is a reminder of the exiles past misdeeds Inhuman strength is required to wield this heaviest of curved great swords. And uh looks like we have that inhuman strength, but not nearly enough dexterity, and I don't plan on I don't believe I plan on getting that much dexterity for this build either. The next item we got was the Great Club. Wood club fashioned from the branch of a giant tree. Requires considerable strength to wield. A hard, durable weapon. Its weight makes it easier to break the guard of shields. So, nothing special there, but <laughs> when you're swinging a tree around, it's going to hit hard. Heretic Staff. Catalyst used by generations of heretic sorcerers. Sorcery is a logical, academic discipline, and the power of sorceries depends heavily on the caster's intelligence. It's a very bland description don't you think it's a heretic staff so why are we talking about the basics of sorcery in it um, it's actually pretty disappointing because this staff uh, I believe is the same staff used by an NPC in Dark Souls 1 named Witch Beatrice uh, she helps us quite a bit in that game if you summon her for the Moonlight Butterfly boss fight but even more important than that, Witch Beatrice is one of the few people 
ever to brave the abyss. Um, I don't think it worked out very well for her, but she's still kind of a badass. Golden Falcon Shield. A metal shield fashioned in the form of a falcon with wings outstretched. The Golden Falcon was the emblem of an ancient band of cell swords, and even to this day, many mercenaries remain who look upon it as a token of good fortune. Uh, it doesn't do anything for item discovery rate, so I, I don't know about good fortune, but um, this is a Dark Souls 2 shield. It was... I, I'll be, I'm, I apologize, I don't remember the name of the group of knights or cell swords who used these, but um, it was paired with the set that the knight class started with in Dark Souls 2. Uh, Falconer set, I believe, something along those lines. Oh, and you know, I totally forgot to take a look at the Grass Crest Shield. Old medium metal shield of unknown origin. The Grass Crest Shield is lightly imbued with magic, which slightly speeds stamina recovery. So this is a Dark Souls 1 uh, shield and a favorite from that game. Um, yeah, if I don't find a great shield I like soon, or I don't, and I'm not going to hit that strength requirement anytime soon, so if I don't find a great shield I like anytime soon, we might be using the Grass Crest in our next, next time we update our Fashion Souls. I don't believe we got anything else that I can remember off the top of my head, so... We're going to move on, and we're going to deal with that boss I keep alluding to. Uh, let's see. The best way from here would be to head over to this staircase. Yeah, this is the first point... Well, that's a lie. This is the first obvious point in the game where you hit a branching path. Um, both paths are required, they're not optional, but it is nice that you can choose to tackle one or the other first. Uh, we're going to go this way because it aligns more with our goals for the lore run and encountering uh, everything in uh, the order that makes the most sense to me. Alright, I'll shut up about that because now... Crystal Sage makes an appearance. I realize I have only two Estus Flasks, so I better play good. <laughs> so as you can see, he uh, warps around the room as soon as we hit him. Ports out to a different location. Damn it! I forgot to summon the Phantom for this fight. Oh. I I might. Okay. So after a certain stage, he brings out duplicates that die easily in one hit, but their magic is still, as you can see, still quite potent. So it's a bit of a hunt to find the correct sage. Now, as you can see, we've got this guy beat. So, I'm going to warp out because I do want to summon the ally we had available to us. But, there you go. I'm not fleeing the battle because I couldn't win with two Estus. It's a really... As long as you don't let it get to you or get, you know, taken off guard, it's a really easy boss fight that... Uh, an ally doesn't really help me all that much. But, it's kind of neat. Um... This is a lonesome road we're on, right? So I figured it'd be nice to bring in other travelers along the way. Give a sense for what these NPCs are up to, where they're at, and what they're willing to help you do.
If that makes any sense. I don't know. If it doesn't, you can tell me to quit it. Nope. Not sure how I feel about this weapon. I really... I've always wanted to like the war pick since it showed up in Dark Souls 1. I think it looks really cool, but... I don't know about that moveset at all. As you can see, Egon showing up on the scene, looking <laughs> looking like he's glitching out a little bit. Um, will you follow me? Okay. Oh, even our phantoms are smart enough to do that kind of stuff. I kind of, I have to admit, I sort of suspected that the game dumbed them down when we summon them. That does not seem to be wholly the case. Ah, that's pretty cool. Egon showing off the Wrath of God style effect his weapon has. But true to his word, he's, he's here to assist us for as long as we don't, you know, fuck with Arena's situation. He's not at the shrine, but apparently he was wandering somewhere in this area. Ah! So, pro tip number one, don't get hit by purple dragon breath. Egon, where you at? This thing's got more HP thanks to you, so I need you to do work. Activate our buff so we have faster stamina recovery. Quickly move around the field. You know, one thing I have to say that I like quite a bit um, about the buffs of rings and weapons and other effects in this game is that uh, in past Souls games, rings would typically like put some sort of visual effect like the one I have now on me. Um, and I honestly hate these kinds of effects. I, I really hate them. I, I don't want to see a glowing green field on my character. Um, I want to see like the armor I chose, the character I created. Uh, so in this game, I really appreciate that for most rings, they don't carry any visual effect. And instead, when you do something like a weapon buff, that can sometimes give you a visual effect. So now I know, even though I also have the Cloanthe ring, which gives me the same buff icon on my life bar, I know exactly how long the weapon skill buff lasts, because when that green effect goes away, it's out of juice. Small little design thing, um, but I definitely appreciate it. One of the... Uh, really nice, I guess, side effects of weapon skills. Where's the real one? Not this time, my friend. Big hat, plague doctor looking thing. Soul of Crystal Sage. And thank you, Egon. I guess. <laughs> I think he just made that fight last longer than it could have, but... Hey. He's trying. He's trying to help. Well. I want to move ahead, but... What I want to do even more than that is take a look at this soul. Ooh. In blue bug pellets. Medicinal pellet made from crushed insects. The blue type temporarily boosts magic damage absorption. The boreal valley is infested with moon bugs, meaning ingredients are never far from hand for the Erythelian slaves who concoct this medicine. Yeah, the moon bugs. That was the item that I was wondering if those are what was eating away at the weapons of the Pontiff Knights. Um... And it is, it's nice that they put this item 
right before this boss fight, you know, in case you need that extra little bit of defense. In case you're taking a lot of hits and you want to gain a little bit of survivability. Alright. Da -da 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 -da, twisted Soul. The twin crystal sages once served as spiritual guides to the scholars of the Grand Archives. And one went on to ally with the Undead Legion. So we just basically murdered the one who, well, defended ourselves against the one who went to the Undead Legion. But now we know there's another one who very likely is in the so-called Grand Archives. That was a very agreeable crystal lizard. Throw back another flask, because this is not not a pleasant area to be in. Let's test our luck. I see the other guy there, but if we can... Aw, oh, no! Nah. <laughs> That's super lame. Now I got troubles. Oh! Now I got real troubles. Alright. I may need to consider adjusting my strategy. I'm gonna double chug. Head back in. Okay. Yeah. Having a little bit of a time. Oh. I would have expected that fire to have some effect on him, but... Remember when I said we had troubles? Troubles have only just begun. Oh, they're in sync. That's adorable. Ooh, I'm dead. I'm very dead. And I didn't remember to silence my phone. <laughs> Alright. And I'm hollowed. <laughs> well, this is what we brought this ring for, is it not? Good God, people! Not every... I didn't know I'm going this way. Not every session is destined to work out the way you want it to, huh? I'm so embarrassed. Oh well. And to avoid sorrow, actually. Fun story. Um, if you've been killed and you're kind of worried about safely making it back to your blood stain. A ring of sacrifice um, will prevent your soul pile from disappearing. Highly, highly recommended for situations like these where you have a large number of souls lying around that you'd prefer not to have to farm back up again. Alright, we kept out. Yeah, man, I spent so much Titanite on this thing, but I just do not like the way... I just do not like the way this feels. Oh, no, 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 no. I know what you want. You throw your fit. How about you do that? Sneaking a kill. Yeah, man, these uh, these enemies that were nothing to me with the right weapon equipped are actually quite dangerous with this one. I guess its speed to power ratio isn't quite what it needs to be to really feel comfortable with. 
I don't know what just... What it was, it just, like, bounced us back there. It was pretty lame. The Herald set. Another one of those starter sets. A bad one, either. Both in terms of defense and... Uh, lightness. Wait. Are you done? How can you move around so quickly with all those sacrifices on your back? Yeah, if, in case you weren't... In case you weren't picking up on it. I, I don't mean it to sound derogatory, but... Um, we're still on the path of sacrifices. Uh, and that looked like an evangelist who was overseeing, I guess, the transfer of sacrifices. I have to wonder, um, was that Ruin? Yeah, you know what? I hadn't thought about this before, but that Ruin we went through and all those hollows um, and the Crystal Sage, I kind of actually get the impression that the Crystal Sage had set up shop there in order to put a hold on any more sacrifices uh, heading to, as you saw, the Cathedral of the Deep. Damn, I, I can't believe I didn't notice that before, but I think that's what's what they're that's what they're trying to say, that's what they're implying. That's super cool. Not so super cool is that guy down there. But as you may have heard with my stupid friggin' phone guffaw, we are out of time for this episode, so I'm gonna cut it off here. And we're going to Meet up next time. Until then, despair. I'll play better next time, I promise. Promise, definitely.